Today, Elite announced a brand new Direct Drive Interactive Smart Trainer to their lineup, and they've called this one the Justo. And in today's video, I cover why the Justo is the smartest smart trainer from Elite to date. Now, the Justo doesn't replace the Doretto XR or XRT, it effectively steps over that model into the new best category. So what's new and improved in the Justo? Up on screen here are all the details. Power accuracy is down to a claimed plus or minus 1%. It has new Elite Flex feet with two options available provided in the box. It has auto calibration. The flywheel is now 6.2 kilos, which is 22% heavier compared to the Dorito XR and XRT models. Lower noise level, improved erg mode power stability. It has a double Bluetooth connection. It has a cardio bridge and a cadence bridge mode, similar to what the Jet Black Vault did, taking an external sensor, connecting it to the trainer, and pushing that through one single connection from the trainer itself. Very handy for things like the Apple TV with its connection limits. It has a standalone mode in both powered and non-powered mode if you're not using any software to control the unit. They have what's called erg mode easy start for smoother erg zone transitions. The Justo has a wide connection port ready for their Ethernet adapter, similar to that of the Kicker Direct Connect. This will be available for purchase as a separate accessory in Q4 2022 at around 99 euro. There is 40% less plastic in the design of the Justo compared to the Dorado XR and XRT models. It is easy to engage the Zwift Super Tuck, which I'm guessing means that it's easy to go to zero cadence from the trainer when it's detecting the cadence. And it's a more compact design when folded up, being only 20 centimeters wide, as opposed to the Dorado XR and XRT being 30 centimeters wide when folded up. So there's the quick overview, the full technical specifications on screen here. The things I'll point out is that it doesn't come with a cassette pre-installed. With the current state of component availability, I can understand where Elite are coming from by not supplying a cassette. The last thing we wanna do is hold up the shipment of trainers because they can't find cassettes to put on them. Other technical specifications do remain the same as the Dorito XR and XRT models. The grade simulation up to 24%, max wattage 2300 watts, and this does have Elite riser support. So a pivoting rear axle, so your bike can go up and down. Onto the pricing, and there is a small step up in the pricing from the Elite Dorito XR, which was released two years ago. The Justo comes in at 11.99 US, 9.90 Euro and 9.99 pounds. Availability is Q3 2022 in Europe and Q4 for the rest of the world. Today I'll do away with the traditional unboxing and building everything and installing a cassette, which I'm sure you've all seen many, many times before. And I'll cut straight to the chase or straight to the ride, more importantly. Now my time with the Justo has included many, many hours on the bike. That's my own training sessions, multiple Llama lab tests, lots of free riding in sim mode. And I've even had Dr. Slain put the trainer to the test himself here in the Llama lab recently. Similar to the Doretto XR, straight off the bat, if I had to pick an elite direct drive trainer to ride at the moment, it's now this one, the Justo. It was responsive to gradient changes through Titan's Grove, which is a great stress tester for any trainer. It held the erg mode set point wattage very, very well, and the power numbers were good. The ride feel was similar to that of the Dorito XR, so a good feel through the pedals with the larger flywheel. And I do like the new flex feet, the red version in particular, that wiggle wiggle for sure. Changing gears on the Justo is just a little bit quieter as there's no plastic casing to resonate or amplify the sound, as is the case on the Dorito XR and XRT models. Jumping to my favorite website, the DCR Analyzer tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how they stack up. Over my shoulder here is the Llama lab test with the Elite Justo, I've called it the Elite X there, just for privacy reasons, back in May, up against the Quark D0 Dub. And you can see there, the overall, it's looking pretty good. Diving in after the warm up to the steady state 200 and 250. Uh, all looking very, really good. 223 Elite Dorito X, 226, so within a few watts there. Not a problem, we'll dive in even further. Those numbers will probably get even closer. 224, 225, there we go. All looking pretty good there. Into the sprints, and not too bad, very short sprint this one, but uh, we're not looking at a massive 100 to 200 watt discrepancy. Um, they were within ballpark of what I was sprinting at for that really short peak power sprint test. Into the overs and unders, which also tests that erg mode change, and all is looking pretty good. First five seconds or so with erg mode as it stabilizes and figures out uh, how smooth I'm pedaling and where it needs to adjust. Um, everything's looking pretty good. 221, 223 with those. No major oscillations and able to grab that watt zone when I needed. Flywheel speed test, where I set the trainer to 225 watts with a very slow flywheel speed. And then every 90 seconds, I change up to a higher flywheel speed. All looking good through here at a lower flywheel speed. Changing gears and when things stabilize. 
through to a higher flywheel speed, not too bad, and then up into a really high flywheel speed, and things aren't too bad. Now, most trainers do fail here, but this isn't too bad, within probably 15 to 20 watts, but this really isn't normal operation. You shouldn't be using erg mode in the 5311. Finally here in sim mode, just riding along into a small ramp test and another sprint jam. Things looking good here too. So a little bit of offset there with the recording, but you can see through here up into the 600 to 700 watt range, that's all looking good. And again, into the sprints, not too far off, just a little short. I need to extend my sprint time a little bit further than that, but uh, all is trending pretty well there. Cadence wise, and the cadence I was using was estimated from the power profile as I was pedaling along. 81 from the Justo, 82 from the Quark Dub, all looking pretty good. Now where cadence does fail when it's estimated from a trainer is when the resistance is backing off and let go and there's no perfect, uh, I guess, sine wave for the power being produced by both legs. And that happens through here and through here when there's changing gears and there's sim mode gradient changes. So I do cut the trainers a little bit of slack when it comes to absolute cadence accuracy, but all in all, still looking pretty good. Pulling up the mean max power graph from the Llama lab test, and again, nothing standing out there. And the overall figures, which includes that five minutes of warm up, which I always find elite trainers take probably five minutes or so to warm up and come into their own. 179.5, 183 overall, weighted average, uh, 221, 224, max power is there, pretty close, and cadence also being bang on. The next indoor ride I did really put that wiggle wiggle to the test, four hours of the Mega Pretzel. Again, Elite Justo up against the Quark D0 dub, 178 versus 177 overall with some stop starts, but pretty much anywhere where I can pick uh, a section of data and dive in. 202, 203, so one watt off there with the favor being on the pedals or on the spider there, all looking pretty good. A little further down the virtual road, uh, two hours 22 deep into this session, Jumping here and see if there's any drift or any separation. 222.6, 221.63, now in the favor of the Justo. No major drifting, no separations, everything's looking good. Pull up the overalls for that four hours, which I did enjoy that slight bit of wiggle wiggle with for a little bit of comfort. We have 178, 177.9, weighted power 199.7, 200 flat. Max power, well, let's not even mention that. Obviously I didn't sprint during that uh, route badge hunt. But overall, you can see the trend there. It's getting a tick of approval from me. And one final session here with uh, no calibration performed whatsoever on this trainer. Uh, 175, 176, all looking good there in the 200 watt steady state. No smoothing applied to that graph, so it does look a little uh, jagged, but that is real raw watts. And again, continuing with the trend of everything looking good on the power side of things. One thing to know about the Justo is if you're pairing the speed and cadence sensor with a watch or a head unit to get distance or speed on those units, you need to set the wheel size to 215 millimeters. That is different to the Dorado XR, different to the Suto, and different to other trainers on Elite as well, but 215 is the number you need to set if you're recording speed and distance directly from the trainer itself. If you're using Zwift, Trainer Road, RGT, Ruby, Elite's own training software, etc., you can ignore that. Speed is calculated automatically. Okay, onto my wrap up with the Justo Smart Trainer, and it's effectively a carbon copy wrap up of my Doretto XR from a few years back. The Justo just has a few more nice to have features, albeit with a slightly higher price tag. The trainer has a good ride feel, power numbers were great, the additional connectivity with the heart rate strap or additional cadence sensor if you're using Apple TV was great, that worked fine. And the auto calibration takes the stress out of not quite knowing if things are calibrated or not, or doing multiple calibrations, that worry has been removed. All in all, Elite have done very well with this trainer and I can confidently say it is the best direct drive interactive smart trainer from Elite that I've ridden to date. And with that, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe to support this channel and to be alerted of more bike tech videos coming up. And we shall see you soon.